Okay. Um, <clears throat> you guys need to. So, what I want from you guys is is to have some sort of. I don't know if you want to call it a contract or a, um, you know, a, a, an agreement where you you as the party have agreed that you are going to work together and you know you've you've decided that your survival hinges upon each other um that kind of that something like that right yeah um so um yeah well i mean it it seems simple enough that uh griff and my characters are there because otho needs some place to live as well as some place to lay low in some of the lower levels of the city and even though there's been a bunch of slaves around everywhere and that's true to draw attention it's not worse than the alternative which is getting stabbed in an alley somewhere well and it, and it honestly it probably has been this these droids that have gone through that have kind of put a damper in your previous survival method which was probably mm. just sleeping on the streets yeah right because there were tons of places where you could just disappear and yeah, you, now now those are slowly and surely going away and like so out. when you, when you guys met and got together you realized hey we can do something here yeah it's like hey this pipe that i was sleeping in has been graded up looks like i need to find an actual house yeah yeah. So I could at least see, like, on Terran's, uh, Terran's side, uh, acting as, like, group father figure. I mean, I'm here just making sure your needs are met and making sure our gank's needs are met. I mean, even if the gank maybe isn't directly involved in all this life stuff, maybe I'm still interested mm -hmm. in seeing them live and continue to provide their services, right? So that's a very easy one. Uh, what do you think well, that was... you end up, like, providing back then? Um... <clears throat> It depends on how much of his day to day life involves things like record keeping and like mm -hmm. you've got any like uh, any You're the smart person. Your, any situation uh, reasonably smart, slightly above average smarts, but does have experience with chronicling and like earmarking and organizing information, mm -hmm. which she does Wonderful. not divulge how. From what location? That's great. That? You're smart, and I don't understand being smart, so we work great together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you have a place to live, and I don't. And I need to eat. So we're gonna... This is gonna be great. What a wonderful mutual exchange of services. Wow! Yeah! Uh, and I think as uh, we have covered, or I believe Theta has mentioned, at least here or otherwise, uh, they are a medic and mechanic. Their services are wanted, and they want to provide their services. That seems like a very reasonable contract angle for them. I, I mean, could it be that he's like getting your getting your ship actually actually space worthy? Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be true too. I don't actually know what condition the ship is yet until we actually start playing. So yeah, that could be part like, of it too. The hyperdrive could be whacked. Mm -hmm. You could be like, hey, gank, get over here. Something like that. Yeah, so... <laughs> like, we're just calling him <laughs> gank. Uh, their name is Goraz, and they're going to become a machine. At least I'm pretty sure that's what they're up to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So, um... How often are you there, uh, Goran, Goraz? Cool. Hang on. Always. He lives in the rafters. You just live in the hangar. There's like a machine shop like right here on the map, like I a, think. Like this looks like one. Or is that like the lounge? <laughs> That's the cafeteria. And th just because this is the only map you're seeing does not mean that this is the only extent of this warehouse of course that so makes sense there's actually a, a bigger storage area to the to the we'll call it the north um there's there's um 
where the slaves used to be kept were over in this area. And you can't see over there. Um, mm -hmm. So there understand. there might be one nearby or something. And, uh, and either and way, perhaps, they they're hiding out. So Perhaps he was subleasing. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a good point. I mean, it's... We sublease out the closet. <laughs> yeah. And and I would I would read, I mean I'm not I'm not assuming that it's a very awesomely decked out machine shop slash doctor's office, but it's serviceable. It's and got it's a table. Clean. It's and got now it has running water. It's got bits and, and bobs. <laughs> okay. Um <clears throat> so what do the three of you do? on day to day. Uh I think uh before we really know what like the tasks fully are around here, I'm probably going person to person uh in whatever group I'm around, making sure they're okay and seeing if all their needs are being met. I'm going and saying like is the water still running here? Have you noticed a change in air quality? Do you guys need more blankets? We could go and try to find some of those or something. So I'm working sort of like as organizational manager. That's what I see myself doing right now, day to day around cool. here. Mm -hmm. um, so you're the you're Lando Calrissian for <clears throat> Cloud City is is basically what I'm getting. getting yeah, I'm this. I'm the Lando of the trash bin. Hobo Lando. Yeah. <laughs> um, like that. And also, like is, and um, also is the is the uh, guy with the the Im implant low. brain implant. Lobot, but you don't have a brain implant. No, no. But actually, it does the uh, everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what? Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, uh, she's since there is still a uh, a fair amount of debris in this section and broken down things and such like that, she's probably been poking around looking for any archives either on crashed uh, little ships, or derelict ones, looking for things like uh, star charts, any. Uh, astrogation equipment and tools that you can kind of poke through and get ready to load onto this ship, as well as surreptitiously, uh, if there are any, like, uh, cameras around, she's going to see if she can slice into that once or twice to see if there's any more Sith activity operating in this general area. Okay. Um, go ahead and make either a perception or a charm or a uh, com well, computers, or even um, streetwise. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with computers. Basically, what, what you should get used to with the, with the mechanics of this system is if you can figure out a way that that skill would be useful for what you're trying to do, tell me what it is, and, uh, and uh, more than often, I'll let you roll that. That makes sense. So I should just straight roll this? So the difficulty is going to be, well, so you've actually said several things. Let's start with the cameras, um, figuring so, out whether or not there's Sith presence. So, so that would be computers, probably? She's slicing into them? Computers, streetwise, charm. Um, you know, let's go with to to solve this problem, right? Mm -hmm. L let's go with computers. Find an unattended terminal somewhere. Okay. okay. Make an average computers check. So that okay. means you're going to do two purple. Okay, so let's just add a P. So P. Work. Find out. Uh, I believe earlier we were having a problem where you yeah. need to refresh to make it work. Yeah, I'm going to do the same here just to make sure. Yeah. I was doing an experiment as well. Okay. Quick well, let's little refresh. Get that back there. Bada bing. Oh, wait. Oh, geez, it oh. just had some terrible lag. Wow, okay. 
Uh, you see how many times I clicked astrogation? <laughs> um, ah, okay. Yours is all but, the way up there. Yeah, yeah, mine's a second, so... Okay. Found the problem. <laughs> Success. Zero. Advantage. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, for those of you that are not familiar with how this, this dice system works, um, it's a narrative system, so you can actually look at the results and say, where did the results come from? And I, I do like you'll, notice, you'll notice that the, the green and the purple are the same shape. You cancel those first, and what's left over is the reason why you succeeded. So because the yellow dice is the uncanceled, that informs me as the GM and, and you guys that this is your skill in computers that won out. So there were some firewalls up, but you were able to bypass those. And because of the advantage, I'm going to spend those, or, or you actually get to choose what to do with the advantage if you have Ooh. an idea. Otherwise, I know what, what I want to have that mean. I mean... But, I have an idea, but I think I might want to leave this up to you for to start with. Well, what's your idea? Well, the idea was to uh, put in a little uh, a little loop in the code that goes to her data pad. That if there's anyone matching any of the uh, SIP that have been around here that are start showing up, or any of the robots, it'll ping her. Okay, the robots show up quite a bit. So oh yeah, you... so if if they're not that rare, then the former. Okay. Anyone in particular? Oh, maybe a certain person for my backstory that I will not divulge at this moment, as well as any other, any of the ones that have been here in the past. How long have you had this loop running? Uh, not very long. Maybe like a couple weeks, or I don't know. I don't know what what what's the time frame exactly. Like how far back can I go? Weeks, months. Well, this is, I guess, your day-to-day -day activity yeah. we're covering right now, right? Uh, one, I, I, I'd say no maybe more like than a, one month. I think. Yeah, maybe like two weeks then. Okay. Um, you are seeing Sith active. Um, but they are only active around that hotel. And they seem to be throwing parties. Huh. So it doesn't seem like they're looking for anyone, and they're staying mostly confined to the hotel, enjoying their hedonistic ways. So uh, she's breathing a little bit easier right now, but not by too much. The other aspect of this is you do see that certain someone actively directing the droids. Oh. Very interesting. And you watch her for a little bit, and she just disappears into the hotel. Hmm. And, and every single one of the Sith bow to her. Of course. Strong like bull, pull plow. Let me just mark that down for later use. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anything else that you're trying to accomplish right now in this time frame that we're talking? Uh, well, also getting any uh, astrogation data from derelict or crashed starships to use for this ship that we're trying to fix up a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit more broad. Um, mm -hmm. What I want you to do on this one, well... Again, you can tell me what skill you want to use. Okay. Could it be like combination of skills, like to use like perception to find a ship and then uh well uh yeah. Hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. But like would it need a com combination or would you only need one? Well, I think that finding the the ship is probably the first step, but 
I'm I'm assuming that you you're gonna find ships. Yeah. So I don't I'm not really worried about that skill check. I'm more worried about whether or not you find usable astrogation data. Uh she could use astrogation skill. So astrogation or computers would also work because <laughs> although astrogation is what you're looking for, they're stored on computers. So let's use a computer again. Okay. And is that the same difficulty or is it greater? Uh, no, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, in fact, how do I set up? How do we set up the? Uh, okay, so you guys need to roll your destiny for this for the destiny pool. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. How does that work? So on your character sheet, there's a roll destiny under the destiny pool. Oh, okay. Ooh. Let's roll that. Something happened. Come on, Destiny. Destiny yeah, does not, not want to arrive. Yeah, no. I have any idea what's going on. Uh, nothing's coming up at the moment. Is like Roll20 having a weird time or something? It's a good question. It could either be the API or just Roll20 itself, which... I don't know. <laughs> it's how about Fancy Grounds? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week we'll we'll use Fantasy Grounds. Ter uh, right, we could definitely give that a try if we can all pop on it for free. So, would at I least be easier. <laughs> I definitely wanted to give Roll Twenty the the mm -hmm. benefit of the doubt, but I didn't. Yeah, it was yeah. working fine all week, and now it's just this. Well, we'll see. Uh, at least, good, thanks for trying it out. Yeah, like I don't usually have trouble with this, but. Hmm. Yeah, I Let's guess the API happens. is just doing I funny stuff. It. Just doesn't seem to be working at all. <clears throat> yeah. Try try doing it now that I'm not in your character sheet. Okay. Nope. Okay. Well, let's just use a house rule that I like, and we're just going to give their um, four white and two black. Okay. So. Oh. Hold on. I can't oh, directly stuff. modify my pool. Yeah. No destiny points have been defined. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So there's some sort of sync with GM feature where we have destiny pool points, and then it will determine things. Oh. Um, but I think the white die right here is... Um, Actually, that just told me what the problem was. Oh, okay. I have to give one light side and one dark side on the dice pool... There we go. And then force the player update. <clears throat> okay. Now, now roll. that didn't sync. Let's see if you can roll it now. Okay. Hey! Got that wholesome energy, apparently. Okay, make sure you, Taryn and Goraz, are also rolling. Oh, okay. Uh, roll destiny. Oh. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, yep, mine worked. There we go. One dark. Yes. Two cool. dark, two light. It be the way to do. The numbers, what do they mean? <clears throat> I think it means you just got out light sided by a Sith acolyte. Oh no. <laughs> okay. So did that update update for you guys? Uh I just yes spent it did. A destiny. We got yeah. three light, two dark. I just spent a destiny point. 
And so now go ahead and um, this difficulty is going to be two purple and okay. one red. Okay, two purple, one R. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go. Oh my. <laughs> You get a despair. Oh, but you did what you wanted, but something happened. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. So now on this one, you'll notice that all of the successes were on your skill except for one. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of your raw talent and your skill that succeeded. Um and But the, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can I can take that and say I know exactly why you succeeded and also where that threat is coming from. And now threat, I get to spend. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to know what that threat means yet. <laughs> no. I like to hold on to that kind of information close at hand, because it's going to inform future stuff. Oh, I bet it's bad data, isn't it? Uh -huh. It's outdated. Uh... Well, she doesn't so you, know. Everything's fine. You find, and you are actually completely and utterly just uh, blown away by your by your uh, fortunate nature here. You actually do find a a full and complete astrogation chart for this entire sector. Wow. That is that is only a month old. Damn. All right. Let's get that thing out of there. And uh, <clears throat> um, the ship that uh, you you found uh, is relatively intact. Ah. Like, is it more intact than the one we have back at the shop? No. Okay. But it is also a Sith. Mm. Shit. So, if it's that case, then she'd probably plug in her big old cable, get the information, take it off, then run back to the shop and let his name, where he at, Goraz, know that there's some good pickings to be had over in that location, but I'm not going to go over there, because I already got all I need right here. That's not my area of expertise. Sounds like a month-long scavenger job. Yeah. Um, according uh, to what, what Otho has been able to figure out is the, the ship uh, looked like it was um, landed just outside of the, the neighborhood. So just to complete the picture here this this is a nine square uh square kilometer uh neighborhood slash city that is towards the bottom of the of the narshada area right so if there's 200 levels of narshada that you're the top the, the bottom nine of them Oof. So, and, and only this nine kilometer area is where these droids are showing up, by the way. Um, but on the outskirts of that, there are all of these uh, abandoned manufacturing places. You know, it's basically a ghost town um, where just 
nobody really feels safe. And so apparently somebody parked their ship there and walked in maybe. So it's not too far away. No, it's been, it has had lightsabers cutting through the exo skin. Oof. The hull is, is no longer viable. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No, there's power. And, and other than the fact that it's no longer really uh, seaworthy, spaceworthy, you think that most of the systems are still functional. Expedition time. Okay, who's all going? I'm not going. Nope, I got everything I need. Don't, no need for me. Oh, come on. Where's your <laughs> sense of adventure? My sense of adventure is getting far away from that ship. Well, you know, they're not direct family. They're, they're just like family, you know. Especially the smelly one there in the corner. You Great. definitely didn't feel any... any... Uh, force users in the area. Nobody's nobody's lurking. Don't, don't suspect nobody's lurking. most people will be coming back. But this sounds like a great opportunity. All right, let's see if now, there's anything he's missed. Doubtful. Seems very. You scary. are all aware that a good number of the Sith that came to find someone ended up dead in the streets. Oh, it's abandoned then. They didn't even know the ship was here. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, its owner's probably dead, to be honest. So, if it's just, you know, me, Goraz, a couple people to carry some tools and heavy parts, and we just make a couple trips back and forth, we'll have enough scrap metal, we can pretend that we're not poor. Okay. Good, good idea. <laughs> so... What are you, um, what are you doing? How are you doing this? <laughs> uh, well, I clearly want to set up some sort of general pipeline from A to B, uh, a way for us to get from our location down to that particular hangar or landing pad, right? Uh, well, you can take us... your ship mm -hmm. if you wanted. Uh, yeah, that's probably a a pretty viable thing to do. You've described this area before as being like a giant hole in the ground with the hangars all around it. So if we just fly over to the hangar, then that almost makes sense, right? Yeah, but this isn't so. So <clears throat> right, if, if this is if this is the Coruscant, uh, the equivalent of that circular port in the middle of Coruscant, right, in that Star <laughs> Wars thirteen thirteen image. It's not exactly like that, obviously, but this is yeah. this other ship is not in one of those on this same uh, round area. Mm -hmm. It's not the same access. It's it look. I mean, it's it probably took some skill to get there. Ah, okay. Uh, in which case, uh, flying into it to get into that same sort of skill position doesn't seem like a very smart idea then, right? No, I mean, you're you're talented enough. To, I mean, you're a trained pilot. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could give it a try. You know what? I, I'm, I'm definitely confident. I'll, I'll go ahead and give it a try. This is, I'm just saying that this isn't going to be something that, that just anybody is going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Basically, I'm saying it's going to be a hard piloting check. Oof. Right. So we'll wiggle through some infrastructure. We'll try to make it happen. And hopefully that'll give us enough cargo space and enough time to get everything we want out of it before anyone really has a chance to stop us. 
And keep in mind, you can use the Destiny pool mm -hmm. to modify the the that chat. Maybe you know a secret pass or passage or something that's more direct or something like that. Right. Uh, okay. I know, right? This sounds good. And I would choose to modify that before the roll or after seeing the result. What's the uh, what are choices? Well, okay. Uh, technically, on this one, uh, you would need to um, modify it before you rolled. It depends on how you how you do it. You definitely can't do it after I've told you what happened, because mm -hmm. that would be silly. Of course. Um, but I mean, I would prefer you to spend it before rolling. Okay, because I understand that. That's a little bit more fair. In that case, on the way in, I'm not going to spend it, and I will be happy to roll piloting to get everyone there. Okay, so go ahead and make a hard piloting. So one uh, of the ways you could do the, the Destiny pool to change is you could actually reduce the difficulty mm -hmm. by spending one of those. So it would take it from a hard to an average. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to, by any means. I'm just <clears throat> trying to educate on the on the way the rules work. No, we 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 need a catastrophic failure that sends us flying into a building, ending. The oh, session. absolutely. We just need to like <laughs> clip a couple things, cause some yeah. property damage. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Sure. I'm not paying for it anyway. Give gives uh, Goraz something to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right then. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh. Prepare for such an exposition. Uh, should I go ahead and just make the piloting roll? Yep. Uh, and I guess since this is on the planet, it would be planetary piloting, right? Um, I keep going back and forth on this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really like the whole you only use pilot planetary on the planet when you're flying a ship that's meant mm -hmm. for space, right? Okay. So, so would like piloting planetary be like running a speeder or something like that? Yeah, I guess no, vehicle we... type more than specific area then, right? Um, let's see how it works. Uh, let's, let's house rule it right now. Um, space. And if it doesn't work, then then we'll do, yeah. For right now, it's planetary, or pilot's pl uh, space. Okay. Wow. Let's this go is what ahead. happens when I try to think six steps ahead. <laughs> That's uh, what happens oh. when I try and think. Oh, I need to actually type in modifiers for that, but... um. Yeah. So, uh, three purple. Now, I will allow you, because you haven't rolled the purple dice, mm -hmm. I will allow you to spend the destiny pool point right now to lower the difficulty. Those are only three advantages and no successes. Yeah. You have technically failed this check, by the way. Right. I've already failed the check, and once I roll the difficulty, I will probably actually fail it. Yep. I'll take a risk. I'll go ahead and um, I'll pop the light side pool. Okay. Beep, beep. Uh, and I believe that would just be the uh, white dice on the dice pool. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Or or do I roll a certain amount of them when I say I, I use the light side? Am I just going to roll one or two or three? So if you're spending a, a light side, then it is a... There we go. Then it is a um, two purples. Oh, that just reduces it. Okay. So I now am spending light side. I now have two purples, and I'm just going to roll the two purple. Yes, pop the hero point. Ah! <laughs> that is three threats, and they all cancel out. Nothing happens. <laughs> I mean, could have been a lot worse. Okay. So, I mean, uh, Gorak, you had Gorak. 
Why do I keep Goraz? You hear as you're coming down the telltale sound of and something has fallen loose. Goraz, turn off the fall. proximity alarms. Now you're not falling, you haven't wrecked, <laughs> but there has been damage done to the ship. Mm. Fun. Like a glove. Another happy landing. <laughs> okay. Writing it back. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think it's time for us to go ahead and pile out. Uh, last you told me, no one's here. So I don't feel any sort of threat. I'm just going to wander out, and I'm going to go take a look at that ship. Yeah, doesn't seem to be anyone there. Uh, uh, this is this is when we need to roll our first initiative check. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. boy. All right. So what shall we be using? Uh, vigilance. Okay. Hey, uh, that's the one I'm better at. Initiative is uh, a simple check, so you do not actually run. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No difficulty on this. Ooh, one success. Ooh, that one die. That's a rip. <laughs> I'm good at being surprised. Get a load of this. <laughs> Dick. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been skilled in things, gosh. <laughs> I, I could be skilled at like the two things that I have that don't overlap with anyone else. <laughs> okay. Um, guess I need to drag that to there. Are you guys seeing a map? Yep. Yes. Okay. I want you to place your characters here. Where? Oh, I'm looking ah, for there. the south end in that alleyway. Ah, okay. Okay. And done. Taking cover already. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys' tokens are much smaller than theirs. Oops. Oh, no. Are you guys seeing tokens at all? Uh, no. No, we're not. Just ours. Uh, are they on the GM layer? They are. That and would be it. Be on the GM layer for a minute. Oh boy, well, we're gonna get a fun surprise. Yeah. So, how many lightsabers can you juggle at once? <laughs> I I could tell you if I had any. This is where I put my lightsaber if I had one. Okay. <clears throat> oh 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 no. Oh no. All I have is my nerd and my mechanic here. I have to protect them. Protech. Go away. Okay. So now, um, and this is, this would be so much easier if I were fluent in this system. Ooh. I thought we were about to get ambushed entirely by monsters. No, just one. And a couple Trandoshans with a with one on a oh, chain. They're just like, get them. Yeah, that's basically why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, that takes a maneuver to get to you and rolls some dysums. Oh no, he fast. Ooh. 
I have no idea how to roll these guys on this system. So I'm just going to do it here. Do you have any melee defense? No. I believe you're all very poorly armored. Uh, my soak isn't terrible because I do have some heavy clothes on, but it's not great. Okay, so <laughs> this creature just bounds at you and misses miscalculates where your head is and takes a bite and just you wheel back and and uh, you you are missed. Okay. Uh, and you have a oh freaking next to you in your face. Oh god, why your head so wide? I can fit my entire torso in there. Yep. Uh, it's making those okay. it's making those crazy noises as well, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yep. Just picture picture the uh, the scene in in Clone Wars, right? Or uh, yeah. <clears throat> Attack of the Clones. Okay, um, it is. These guys uh, take some pot shots at you guys, but it's obvious that they're not actually trying to hit either of you. Um, they're more just trying to keep you from running away. Pin us down. Um, and it is Otho's turn. Okay. So is there any attack of opportunity style mechanics in the system? Are there? Uh, not really, but I, I house rule them occasionally, if it makes okay. sense. So, for example, could Otho like, go through here and up behind his barrel? Sure. Okay. So let's scramble back out there, and she's going to pull out her holdout blaster real quick, because although she does have a little knife, she does not fancy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this beast. So she's going to draw that out, and she's going to take a shot at it. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. Just a regular? Yep, with one, one, uh, two purple. Okay. Oof. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, make your check. <laughs> okay. You're at close range on this guy, so you only have one purple on the check. Okay. He's also oh. a large target, so you're going to get two blue... Two boost dice, which are the blue ones. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I need to. I've just been writing down skills. It's, yeah, okay, it's modifiers. All right. So, two blue. Yep. Okay. Two blue and one purple. Yep. Okay. Let's go. That's the wrong. There we go. Wow! Okay, you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I was not expecting to do that good. Then advantages are really, really nice. Yeah, um, definitely. It's also helping you, you roll with that. Okay. What's that? And uh, so crit. What exactly is the um? threshold for that, because I noticed that the lower the crit range is, the better it is. Yep. Does that mean so the number of success above normal? You need... Your 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 um, weapon entry should have a crit rating on it. Yeah. It's got crit four, I believe. Yeah, right there. That is the number of uh, advantages it takes to crit. With okay. Weapon. Okay. So... so 
you know, since uh, since this Nexu loves growling and screaming so much, she's probably going to put a blaster bolt right in its mouth. Okay. I mean, it it does turn and, and looks at you, and as you fire at it, now, because the rounds in this in this system are about 15 seconds, mm -hmm. I always say that you are able to shoot multiple times, yeah. and this is just the culmination of the hits. Yeah. So you hit this thing, and, and although you are pretty sure that most of the hits aren't really doing much damage, you do end up hitting it squarely in the eye, Oof. and you do just enough damage to get past its soak, and the crit kills it. <laughs> oh, jeez. What, what happened on the back end there? I, is there like a critical injury chart? What, what happens when something gets critical? Just so, so I'm aware of what's happening here. There is normally a critical injury chart, mm -hmm. which is a D100, and it's normally requires a 151 plus to kill someone with one shot on percentiles. Okay. 151 percent? What? How? how? But be, be, <laughs> There are things called vicious and um, lethal blows adds 10 to that roll. And uh, any, it, so if you crit this guy and then somebody else crits, that adds 10 to it. So, it, and you can stack your crits on top of that as well. Ooh. So I've seen, I've had builds where, that I've built that the plus alone to that check was 90. And in this case, uh, there was no bonus to that check, but still rolled really well, it seems, right? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the mechanic. That Nexu is only a minion. Ah, okay. <laughs> and because okay. minions don't have strain, they can't, if you crit them, they just die. Nice! Very good. I, I, I can get behind that. It makes you feel competent. Like, I, I like a Mutant Masterminds did that. Like, you can just kind of mow through minions. It's good. Minions are good. The minions yep. are good. Makes, makes, makes me feel just strong. <laughs> um, and how do you want to spend that last advantage? You can give it to the next acting character and give them a boost die. Yeah, so she, she's going to be kind of crouching behind this barrel as the next flops down to the ground. Going to look at Taryn is just standing there. <laughs> it's like, what are you waiting for? Shoot him! And it's going to pass the uh, advantage on to him. Okay, so what, what actually ends up happening is because these guys see the this happen, they kind of lose their concentration for a moment. And um, Goraz is going to get a boost die on his attack that he's going to roll right now. No, you don't want to? Fusion cutter. Wow. Yeah. So you are, you are in short range with either one of those, so you can move up to them. Okay. So, yeah. You are actively taking a, an action to take cover, um, which is, I'm going to uh, rule that that is going to equal full concealment, and so they can't attack you. Yeah, that works. OK. Uh, it is now Taryn's turn. And you get that boost dice. All right. Because that's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Let's see. How do I want to play this? I think I think I know how I want to play this. So I believe with quick draw, I can go mm -hmm. ahead and draw a weapon out as an incidental. I'm going to make those brass knuckles. 
I believe and... as a maneuver, I can change range increments. So I can go from short to engaged with one of them. Yeah. All and right. Although that says it's 30 feet, um, it's mm -hmm. each square is one meter, not okay. five feet. That's just fine then. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember I, it. Yeah, I, I think it actually changed that in the settings as well. Yeah, we're on, actually, on each individual map, it can be changed. But yeah, we're uh, we're actually using um, theater of the mind mechanics, so okay. it's just it's just short, medium. <clears throat> it's convenient long. to look at. Yeah. Yes, it's look at look at all the pretty maps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all and, right, and I, I mean it's also good for like finding cover and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, and this is this well, is just an extra advantage on the roll, or is it a blue die? It's a it's an a, a, a blue die to roll with it. Got it. All right. Because well, they've they've basically dropped their defenses somewhat. Okay. Is there uh, anything else I need to add to the roll? Any modifiers? So if you attack from that side, you will also they'll they'll have cover, but unless you're actively standing on that. Uh, okay. That's basically a trash pile that they've taken cover behind, but... Uh, I'll, I'll jump on the trash pile. That, that's fine with me. Okay. Because um, you, can, you can move to this square, this oh. side of them, sure. without any issue, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm only, fine with that. The only issue is that now you're in crossfire, but... Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Uh, so go ahead, and all engaged attacks are average difficulty, mm -hmm. unless they are wielding a, uh, unless you're wielding a ranged weapon in engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, then it depends on the weapon, but I'm assuming you're using a I'm melee using, weapon. Yeah, Bell, using brass weapons. weapon. Yes, that's right. Uh, and average difficulty is two purple. Exactly. All right, cool. Hey, I remember that. All right, so I got a blue, a purple, and all my dice. Let's see how this goes. Uh, well, that is no successes, but that is three advantages. Uh, let's see. Correct me on this if I'm wrong. Uh, each of the qualities on my weapons costs two advantages to activate. And you have to hit them. And I have to hit them. Okay. Uh, I guess in the meanwhile, I'll go, what can I use my advantages for? I think there's a page full of them. So there's... Usually it's just mechanic things, like giving boost mm -hmm. dice and that kind of stuff. Um, you could also use three advantages to cause him to fall backwards and trip mm -hmm. over, the, over the refuse. Falling down, right? Which would essentially be the the knockdown too. Yes, but the difference is is that that it I didn't isn't hit actually your weapon knocking him down. It's it's the ferocious Wookiee that appeared in front of him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, that is uh, your turn. Yeah, knocking him over sounds like a good thing to do right now. So we'll we'll have that happen as I come ferociously at him. He he topples over. Okay, he is. Foolishly thinking that that's a good thing for him because he has a ranged weapon. Mm -hmm. And it is not going to be a good thing for him. Do you have any melee defense or ranged defense? Uh, no, I do not have any defense. I have soak. I'm wearing a poncho. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very, very heavily armored, of course. Uh, so what's happening next? Okay, so he does hit you with, with this rain of blaster fire. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you take uh, six points of damage as these hit you. Um, and you are going to, um, um, so yeah. we start at six points. I have four points of soak. It goes to two and then that goes to wounds. Correct. 
many sub do you have? Four. So so that drops it to two, so you've only taken two. Yep. I've gone from 17 to 15. No, technically. All right, starting from zero. I've gone to two. Yep, exactly. Perfect. And the guy from behind you shoots you as well, um, doing the same amount of damage, um, but to your weapon, and your weapon is going to take uh, that damage. So it's gonna it's gonna drop from un undamaged to uh, damaged. Let's see. There are <laughs> conditions here. Uh, I don't see damage. Should I just put it from new to minor? Yep. Okay. Shot there we go. Perfect. Shot him in the fist. That's so damn big. Hey, I mean it's, that chunk of metal took a blow for me. Yeah. It's it's basically going to just impose a set back on all of your, your attacks with it. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the sheet automatically handles them, but uh, we'll make sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, who's up next? I know, right? So now it's top of the round again, uh, which brings it to Otho. Otho. <laughs> okay. Well, it seems like a pretty good position behind this barrel. So she is going to, with this apparently amazing blaster pistol, is going to take a shot at the nearest... Okay. And is this the same roll as last time? So two black, one purple? Uh, one purple. Oh, yeah. And you are actually going to get um, no, no benefits from any boost... Okay. He, he's not in cover, but he's not, he, right? He's just normal. Okay, so just one purple. Just okay. one purple. Let's go. Oh, just squeaking by. <laughs> Such a great shot. And then <laughs> you guys are just missing. Okay, Goraz. And you thought stormtroopers were bad shots. Hey, man. Land those first ones, so I'm already better than stormtroopers. Uh, look, we're so on... Yeah. My rule of thumb is that you can move six squares, but it's not really all that... Brass knuckles sideways. <laughs> So you did that last round, right? So someone with a dangerous weapon is now approaching. Brandish's tool with gotcha. malicious intent. You gonna get actually into cover or into battle with them? Okay, Playing so it safe. Engage. Okay. All right. Uh, um, I think I'm the last one, right? Terran's turn. Okay. I'm already Jason with them, uh, so I'm going to aim for an extra blue dice. Uh, he is still knocked down, isn't he? Yep, he did not get back up, so you get, you get an extra boost die. Uh, and a boost is a... Blue. Okay, another another blue. So I'm at two blues and two purples to try to punch this guy who's now on the ground. 